Hello everyone, we are working on my once stolen, now returned 1980 Honda CX500. It's been shown out here at my dad's, uh, in need of a water pump mechanical seal, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Uh, and what the symptom here is, is water dripping down this part of the engine casing. Uh, one thing to check is the O-rings at the end of this chrome uh, coolant pipe. In my case, that was not the issue. The issue is actually the mechanical seal that separates the oil on the inside of the engine from the coolant and the impeller area of the water pump. Uh, tank's already off, battery's out, all that stuff. First thing to do here is get these carbs off. That one's being a little prick. I do not have an eight mil box wrench right now, so I'm just gonna do all these. See if I can wiggle the carbs out of here. <sighs> wow, why were those on so tight? Okay. Is the intakes off. So what I've just unbolted here is one of the rear uh, engine hangers. Uh, the engine's actually, the engine's stressed membrane here attaches here, 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 and here, and then it becomes a part of the frame. Uh, these, it's not strictly necessary to remove them. Well, I've never done this without removing them just because it takes five minutes and it makes getting the carbs and these cables out so much easier. Though, these are going to have to come off. Little 10 mil bolt. Oh, well that works too. Sure. So now we're to the real part of this. Uh, you can see here this wetness under here, and that is not coming from this O-ring. I just I thought there was a, 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 a bolt missing there. These are actually pins that help locate it. This thing's kind of a pain to get off. Uh, so this this coolant hose, this coolant pipe is going to have to come off first. A couple Allen wrenches, uh, Allen bolts that have to come off for that, and you're going to want to drain the coolant. So. I have somewhere a thing for that, but first That's all three of them. Three bolts hold that on. Three bolts and two dowel pins. So now you're gonna need a couple wrenches. Doesn't really matter the size, because they are for prying. And there's sort of a lever point here you can use. seal looks to be in okay shape. So there we can see that is the impeller itself. There's just a 10 mil nut there. I'm just gonna spin that on off. And you can see the impeller is coming off a little bit. Don't lose that. That's very important. And then that should come off fairly easily. Now, here's one thing I'm going to have to buy. 
this copper washer, I'm not entirely sure what part it plays in sealing the system up, but you either have to re-anneal that, and as you can see, this one's kind of munched up, or you go buy another one. So I'm gonna go to Ace Hardware and buy another one. There's the impeller, and over there, that is the polo mint. You can see mine has a couple of cracks in it. So that is definitely problematic. I'm gonna have to get that out of the back of that impeller somehow. And here, oh wow, that just came right out. That is my old mechanical seal. As you can see, the design of the new one is slightly different. It's a much larger sealing surface. This is just rubber around here, so I should be able to dig underneath the mint. Yeah, you can see it's just really brittle, just cracking apart. There we go. That is the old polo mint out. Try to clean up in that cup where this new uh, seal is going to have to stick to. This one didn't look like it had much stickiness left to it. But regardless, I'm going to heat that up and put it in there once I get that cleaned out with some Q-tips. Uh, I'm going to clean this out to get as nice of a sealing surface for that new polo mint as humanly possible. And then I will see you soon. Here we have the mechanical seal. And this is what's called the polo mint because it looks like, um, well, polo mint. Kitty, hello. So uh, we don't need the polo mint right now. Uh, what we're interested in this bit. And the way that a mechanical seal replacement usually works. You take the rear cover off, press out the old seal, and then you press in this metal cup. We're not going to be doing that. We're leaving the metal cup in there, and we got to take the guts out of this. So, I just have to pet the cat, gently hold this. Not a lot of work. Okay, now you really gotta go. I'm gonna start playing with fire here. So the idea here is you heat up the adhesive on the bottom. I have heard that it will just fall out. I think it might need some convincing. There we go. Clean and out. Hey, and it's warm. It's freaking warm too. Holy crap. So that actually came out fairly cleanly. You really, really, wow, that is, that is quite hot. You really don't want to mess up this mating surface here. Um, looks like, looks like it's in good shape. That is actually what seals. Uh, I don't actually think this down here has no sealing, uh, uh, sealing property whatsoever. Another important thing, uh, you see these, there's these two little indentations here on the inside of that. When putting, uh, when putting this back into the bike, it is important that these two bumps here match up with those two bumps there so that this portion of the seal does not spin. Thank you, phone. Does not spin uh, inside the unit. So I'm actually, I'm just gonna let that cool down a bit and uh, go plop that in the, uh, plop that in the bike. Got that nice and cleaned out. I believe the process here now is to take this here. There we go. Take this guy. Press him right on in there. So there's the copper crush washer. Next step here is going to be to re-anneal that. So to that end, I have Senior Blowtorch. So you want to get it to the point where it's glowing nice 
cherry red like that. And then we're gonna let that cool down on its own. In the meantime, now we put on the gloves. You don't wanna do that before, just in the off chance that uh, you catch an errant bit of flame, you do not want to melt the latex to your skin. Uh, I've been there, it's not pleasant. You take off your glove and it sticks, and it's melted to your fingerprint, and it takes your fingerprint off with it. And then it makes it really hard to unlock your phone. And the reason for that is because now it is time to install our mechanical seal. So, the way this thing works, is uh, it's, it's spring loaded here, it's got this rubber sleeve that goes all the way through to this. This spins against that, uh, uh, that ceramic, and this side is oil. Well, it's th this side is the, the, the crankcase. There's not really gonna be any oil in there, but coolant is gonna be trying to get in through here into the oil, so it's gonna try to go through this bottom part, it's gonna tr try and go through this part that's uh, rubbing against the polo mint, and it's gonna try and work its way down the shaft in between, which is why we've got that crush washer there to seal that part. So there's a lot of stuff happening here. So what we wanna do is, since we've kinda of destroyed the glue on this, is I'm going to smear some good old right stuff. And I am absolutely shocked that I actually had some of this sitting around. Uh, it seems like I've bought mm, 12 cans of this stuff because every time I go to use it, I can't find my can. There we go. That is perfect which means I can set that down, get a new glove, so I'm not, because one thing that I don't want to do, I don't want to go getting large amounts of Permatex all over internal engine components, because that's how you get oil, or get a, get sealer into oil passages and seal up things that are supposed to not be sealed. So, take note of the uh, clocking marks there. Let's see. Oh, okay, there we go. So there's the two clocking marks. They're roughly on the top and bottom, so I want to orient it like this. Okay. Wow, it's really tough to see. There we go. So it'll only push down one way, and that's how you can tell that the notches are aligned. So now... We want to take our soapy water pump, smash that on there. Okay, so the washer is annealed, and here's the acorn nut. I'm just going to put that on there, and it's very, very important that you don't torque this too much, because uh, if you strip those threads, that's the end of the camshaft, and uh, well, it's kind of a bad day if something happens to that. It's also very important that this is an acorn nut, because what you're preventing here with the seal and everything is coolant from getting into the threads and going down through the threads, into the seal, and into the engine itself. Um, some Loctite would probably not be missed, but I don't have any, so I'm just going to stick this on. So for torque, I think the value is like uh, 17 inch pounds. I'm just gonna go, yep, that's pro that's, that feels pretty good. Okay, so now that we have our water pumped in, this cover needs to go on. And of course, you wanna make sure that you don't get it crooked onto those dowels there. I'm just gonna Three. Where's the fourth one? Lovely.
with mechanical serial placement on a CX500. I think